For this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the approximate sample mean, sample variance, and sample standard deviation of the frequency distribution. The reason we say this is approximate is because we don't know the actual data, we just know the counts in each class. So just to review how to do this, and your formulas might look slightly different, but they are essentially the same thing. Some textbooks use slightly different formulas. But to find the sample mean of a frequency distribution, you're going to take x times f, where x is the midpoint of the class, f is the frequency. You're going to find the product of those two values and then add up that entire column and then divide by the number of terms that you have. And remember that n can be found by the sum of your frequencies. So if you don't know how many there are, to find n, you can just add up all of your frequencies. The sample variance, we actually have to find the mean first, and then you have to take each individual midpoint, subtract the mean, then square the deviations, multiply it times the frequency, find the sum of that column, divide by n minus 1, and that will give you your sample variance. And then your sample standard deviation is just the square root of your variance. So once you've found the variance, you just do the square root. If you have to do hand calculations and show all the work, the easiest way to do this is in a table format. I will show you how to do this using both the TI-84 and the TI-Inspire graphing calculator, so if you want a shortcut, make sure you look for those videos. All right, so let's get started. What we have here is we have the class is 20 to 24, 25 to 29, 30 to 34, 35 to 39, 40 to 44, and 45 to 49. Our frequencies are listed out, so we do need to know our n, which remember n is the sum of the frequencies. So whenever you see this, it just means add up all this column. So if I add up all of these values here, it ends up giving me 25. And I've already done all of the math on my paper, so the numbers that I'm getting quickly um, is because I already have it worked out on my paper, but all I did was add up this entire column and ended with 25. The midpoint is the middle number in between these two. So for the first one, to find the midpoint, it's just your lower plus your upper divided by 2. Okay, so if I take 20 plus 24, I get 44 and divide it by 2, it gives me 22. And we can see we're adding 5 each time. So to get to the next one, I can just add 5, or I could do the same thing, 25 plus 29 divided by 2. There's a couple different ways to get that. So you can either add the class width of 5 for each of them, or you can add the lower and the upper and divide by 2. And I skipped one. I was trying to work ahead. So this would be 37, 42, and 47. Okay. So our next column, what we're going to do, again, we're trying to find the mean, and the mean is the sum of x times f divided by n. So I'm going to have to take the x column, the midpoint, and multiply it by f. Okay, so I would do 22 times 3, which is 66. 27 times 6 gives me 162. 32 times 7 is 224. 37 times 5 is 185, 42 times 3 is 126, and then 1 times 47 gives me 47. All right, so now what we have to do in this formula is we have to sum up this column. Okay, so we have to find the sum of x times f. So I added up this entire column and I end up with a total of 810. So then we can say that the mean, this will give us our mean, is equal to the sum of x times f, or the midpoint times the frequency. And this is approximate because we don't know the exact values. We just know that three values fall somewhere between 20 and 24. We don't know what those exact values are. And divide it by n. So I would take 810 divided by 25, which gives me 32.4. So this would give us our pro approximate 
sample mean? Okay, and if we look at it, that makes sense that it's between 30 and 34 since majority of our data falls here. Our highest frequency usually helps us decide where our mean is going to be closest to. And so since we had the most between 30 and 34, it makes sense that our mean is between those values. All right, so now comes the difficult part, okay? Um, I really do advise not doing this by hand, but I know that there are professors and teachers out there that require you to show out all the work, so that's the reason I'm making this video. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do, like you could always use an Excel spreadsheet or the spreadsheets in your calculator um, to do a lot of these calculations, but I'm going to do everything by hand right now, or at least write the answer down for you. Okay, so in our sample variance formula, the next thing that we need to do is find the deviations. So we have to do the x minus x bar. Okay, so to find the x minus x bar, remember that we just found that our x bar is 32.4. So I'm going to take 66 and subtract 32.4. And I'm going, sorry, I have to subtract my midpoint. I have to look at this column. Just looking at the wrong column for a second. So I'm going to do 22 minus 32.4, which gives me negative 10.4. And then I'm going to take 27 minus 32.4, 32 minus 32.4, 37 minus 32.4, and then I'm going to continue the 42 minus 32.4 and the 47 minus 2.4, or 32.4. All right, on to the next column. Like I said, this is very time consuming to do by hand, so if you can use technology, it's much quicker and much more reliable. So now what we have to do is square all these values, and you cannot round, so you have to make sure that you write out the entire thing. So I'm gonna take negative 10.4, and I'm gonna multiply it by negative 10.4, or square that value. Make sure that you remember when you square a negative, it becomes a positive. So all of these values will be positive in this column. So I have 108.16, 29.16, and again, I'm just squaring this column right here. So I'm squaring the negative 5.4. Square the negative 0 0.4 gives me 0 0.16. The 4.6 is 21.16. 9.6 is 92.16, so if I square 9.6. And then the last one, if I square 14.6, I get 213.16. So you could just plug those all into your calculators because obviously you probably don't have 10.4 squared um, memorized. All right, so we have one more column that we have to fill out because we need to do F times the squared deviations or the deviations squared. So in our last column, we would have to do F times X minus X bar squared. So now we're going to take our frequency column, which is this column here, and we're going to find the product of 3 and 108.16, which gives me 324.48. And then I'm going to take the frequency of 6 times 29.16, and that gives us 174.96. 7 times 0 0.6 gives us 1.12. 5 times 21.16 gives us 105.8. 3 times 92.16 gives us 276.48. And then the last one is 1 times 213.16, which is 213.16. So in our formula, what we need is the sum of this column. So we need the sum of the frequency times x minus x bar squared. So we need to add up this entire column. And like I said, it's much easier if you use a spreadsheet to help you. Um, but I would just add every number in here. So the 324.48 plus the 174.96 all the way down to the 213.16. And when I add this column together, it gives me 1,096. So now we have all of the information that we need to find the variance, okay? Remember, because we are dealing with a sample, we use S squared. So S squared is equal to the sum 
of the frequency times x minus x bar squared. So it's the frequency times the deviations squared divided by n minus 1. So we would take 1096 and divide it by 24. And the 24 came from 25 minus 1. Okay. Um, when I pl plug this into my calculator, I get approximately 6.5 seven sorry I'm looking at the wrong place on my calc on my table or my paper um, it should be 45.6 repeated okay so this ends up being 45.6 repeated and then to find the standard deviation so this would be our variance Okay. And s is found by doing the square root of s squared. So we would just take the square root of 1096 divided by 24, which gives us approximately 6.75771, which is what I started writing on the last one. Okay, so this would be the approximate sample standard deviation. And up here, I didn't put that this was the sample variance, but this would be the sample variance. Okay, so the approximate mean of this data set would be 32.4 with an average um, distance from the mean of 6.75771. Remember, that's what the sample standard deviation gives us. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you need me to cover, please let me know that as well. And don't forget to check out both the TI-84 and the TI-INSPIRE version of this video so that you know how to do it in a calculator to see how much quicker it really is.